This is question 10, part D, the last problem in exam one. And we're looking at the trapezium in that diagram. Looks something like this. Yes, it is a trapezium because a trapezium has two parallel sides. So a square is a trapezium, a rectangle is a trapezium. That's just the way it goes. If it has two parallel sides, it's a trapezium. And they've given us um, a bunch of information leading up to this problem, and we need to minimize this area. So we know a few things about it. Because of the radius of the circle, we know that that height equals 2. So we can say h equals 2. We know because of part c, we know this length and this length. We know because of part c, they let us solve for these in terms of theta. So we know that we can call, say, a equals 2 minus 2 cos theta on sine theta, and we'll say b equals 2 on sine theta. You'll see why I chose a and b like that in a moment. And then you've got your information to work out the area of a trapezium. You've got your a and b, and you've got your height. Let's write the area formula for a trapezium. It's half a plus b times h. We can sub in what we've got. Well, you've got this half times your height, which is 2. So those just become 1. The real business is in this bracket here, where you've got your 2 minus 2 cos theta over sine theta plus 2 on sine theta. There's where it's all happening. That can just go away. What do we got? We've got 2 plus 2, which gives us 4 minus 2 cos theta on sine theta. Great. We've got an expression for our area. We want to minimize it. Let's find that derivative. Derivative is going to be dA d theta. Or in other words, the derivative of a with respect to theta. Well, we need to use the quotient rule, which is the diff of the top, the derivative of the top times the bottom. So cos diffs to negative sine, but you've already got the negative sign there, so it becomes 2 sine theta times the bottom, so that's going to be squared there, minus the derivative of bottom sine theta, which diffs to cos theta, times the top. So you get this 4 minus 2 cos theta cos theta over the bottom squared. Straight away, we want to solve for when this is a minimum. So we're going to set this equal to 0. And if we set this equal to 0, then we can just multiply both sides by sine squared and get rid of it. So we get 2 sine squared theta minus 4 cos theta. And then we get plus 2 cos squared theta. And alarm bells should be ringing in your head because you have a trigonometric identity here. You've got your 2 sine squared theta plus 2 cos squared theta. And immediately, it should jump out to you that those two add together to give you 2 because of the Pythagorean theorem. That's some year 11 knowledge right there coming back to haunt you in your year 12 exam. Then you have 4 cos theta equals 2. And if you solve for theta, well, it's going to become cos theta equals a half. And due to the domain restriction, theta is pi on 3. So there's theta. It's not good enough because it wants us to find the minimum value of the area. So we need to sub pi on 3 into this area formula here. So I'll make a bit of room here. So we have a of pi on 3 equals 4 minus 2 cos pi on 3 over sine pi on 3. Now cos pi on 3 is a half. So we get 4 minus 1 on sine pi on 3, which is root 3 on 2. It pays to know your exact values. And 
that becomes 6 root 3. And if you rationalize the denominator and simplify, you get 2 root 3 there. Now, they haven't been explicit about giving units. So they should accept that answer. But just as a precaution, I like to put units squared at the end. So I'd write something like a min equals 2 root 3 units squared, just to show the examiner that I understand that I'm working with an area there. Hope you went well on your paper, and if you have been, thanks for watching.